Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached, in terms of this Daniel Smith series that I'm doing, the part that is known in the quite um, arcane, I guess slightly technical, artistic jargon as the end. And that is to say, all of the general colours are now done. This, this, this episode will tie those up. There are still, at this point in time, I haven't done... Uh, the iridescence or the interference colours, so they're still to come, and I'm not uploading these necessarily in the order I'm filming them, so this may not actually be the last video. As always, Pro Art Proline Plus Brush, Crap Aquafine Hot Press Student Grade Paper, and the spots on the sheets from Daniel Smith were wetted a few minutes before the video began to get them pre soaking. I've kind of gone out of order here a little bit. If you saw the last video, I accidentally skipped five colours when I was setting up the charts for those. So I'm going to do those colours first and then kind of carry on from where we should be. So we should be in the sort of umbers end of the browns going into the blacks. And I've just got these ochres to finish us off. So the first one is uh, Burnt Yellow Ochre, which is uh, PY43 Natural Yellow Iron Oxide. And... As it's burnt, calcined, the iron changes oxidation state and all of that sort of thing, and it becomes a red. Lovely granulating, transparent red, low staining, light fastness of one. I like that. That could be a nice alternative to a burnt sienna. Oh dear. Let's zoom you in a little bit. Let's let you enjoy this as well. There you go. See? You didn't need to change channels and watch Jen Maguire after all. I can do zoomed in just like everyone else. Roasted French ochre next. This is PR102, natural red iron oxide, granulating, transparent, low staining and light fastness of one. This is a little bit harder to lift off the spot and it's a bit less red than the last one. I mean, it's still a reddish brown, but it's perhaps more brown uh, than reddish brown, if that makes any sense at all. It's much more subtle. Uh, I'm not sure what I'd use it for, but yeah, it's pretty. Burgundy Red Ochre next, which is a transparent, granulating, non-staining, light fastness one colour. This is more of an orangey brown, uh, more of what I'd consider a burnt sienna type brown, but with added granulation and it's a natural red iron oxide PR102 that is used to manufacture that. Next we have Indian Red, one of the old faithful colours that every set seems to have. Granulating, opaque, one of the few opaque watercolours, moderately staining and light fastness one. And this uses PR101 which is synthetic red iron oxide. Beautifully intense colour here, it's got a really nice chestnutty tone to it. It is absolutely opaque, as one would expect it to be. I mean, if it wasn't opaque, there'd be something wrong. Indian red should be opaque. Let me just throw a bit more water on to see if we can get some more interesting granulation to happen. Big, dense, heavy particles of pigment there. Really, really useful, lovely colour. One of those colours that's a little bit too much sometimes and hard to dull down. Venetian red next. A lot of people think that those two are the same thing. They're actually not. This uses PR101, synthetic red iron oxide. It's moderately staining, granulating, opaque and light fastness one. And this is immediately much more red. This one we've just done is much more sort of purple or maroon this one is a more of an orangey red this is the one that makes the nice browns with, with the, the nice neutrals with um, ultramarine uh, Indian red doesn't tend to Italian burnt sienna next which is PBR7 brown iron oxide it is staining granulating sorry non-staining granulating semi-transparent and has a light fastness of one and this is a more brown than those two really vivid colours we've just looked at. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more subtle. Again, you could use this instead of any burnt sienna, but this is a particularly nice burnt sienna. 
Next is Raw Umber Violet, which disappointingly is just a convenience mix. It's a mix of PBR7 Brown Iron Oxide, aka Raw Umber, and PV19 Quinacridone Violet. So you could just mix this yourself with Raw Umber and Quinacridone Violet. It is granulating, semi-transparent, low staining, and has a light fastness of 1. And it is an interesting looking mix and as it dries so you'll see it when it has dried a lot this sort of maroony bloody color that it has segregates and you get the purple under layer with the red granules on the top pretty could be useful for monochromatic painting but i'm not honestly sure what else transparent brown iron oxide next which is granulating transparent non-staining and light fastness one and it uses pr101 Synthetic Red Iron Oxide. And this is a lovely, almost quinacridone gold toned iron oxide. Very pretty indeed. Very useful tone there. If you want something more granulating than quin gold, that's a useful one. Next up is Transparent Red Iron Oxide, which uses PR101 Synthetic Red Iron Oxide. Again, granulating, transparent, non-staining, and has a light fastness of 1. And this is basically a sort of more orange version of the same sort of thing, a more more red tone to it than this sort of neutral of the last one. Okay, next up is Fired Gold Ochre, which uses PR102, red natural iron oxide, granulating, transparent, non-staining, and a light fastness of 1. This one's a much lower pigment load, much paler colour. It's a little bit pink. Reminds me of Marolone or Caput Mortuum at very low concentrations. You get that sort of very fleshy kind of tone. And obviously I'll show you these zoomed out when we get to the end. Next is the environmentally friendly iron oxide. Now I don't know whether it really is, but they claim it is. It uses PBR6 iron oxide hydroxide brown. Granulating, semi-transparent, non-staining, and has a light fastness of 1. Nice strong granulation there. Perhaps a bit more opaque than I would probably want. It could be a nice alternative to Burnt Sienna again. And next Burnt Sienna itself, which uses PBR7, brown iron oxide, granulating, staining, Sorry, granulating, non-staining, semi-transparent, and has a light fastness of 1. And this is a nice burnt sienna. That will make a nice neutral with ultramarine. It's got a lot of orange undertone to it, which will obviously help that process along. And obviously we'll look at all of these once they've dried down as well. Now onto the bottom row. I'm going to flip them over just to make it easier for me. Here we have English Red Ochre, which is granulating, transparent, non-staining, light fastness 1, and PR101, red synthetic iron oxide. This is superficially very similar to Burnt Sienna. Very similar indeed, in terms of hue. I mean, texture is quite different. Slightly smaller particles in that. Next is Burnt Umber, which I usually expect to be a very dark brown indeed. And this uses uh, um, PBR7 natural, sorry, PBR7 brown iron oxide. It is granulating, semi-transparent, low staining and has a light fastness of 1. This has quite a strong yellow undertone, but it is a very dark brown. It's what I would expect, but I think that the undertone is very yellow compared to what I'm perhaps used to. Next is the environmentally friendly brown iron oxide, which I guess is supposed to be an alternative to the burnt sienna. And this uses PBR6, which is iron oxide hydroxide brown. And actually that's more of a normal burnt umber. So it could be a good alternative to burnt umber. It is granulating, semi-transparent, non-staining, and is an unrated light fastness, but probably one. Last on this page, raw umber. Granulating, semi-transparent, low staining, light fastness 1, and again PBR7, brown iron oxide, which we've seen a lot of today. 
and this has a green undertone as many umbers do. I quite like mixing that with cobalt blue, um, becomes very useful for painting storm clouds. Just pop those to one side to dry. They are all different. There's a bit of sameness, but they are all different. Next up is sepia. Now, this is obviously a sepia hue, as most sepias are. It's not squid ink, although you can still get those sepias quite easily. It's a mixture of PBR7, brown iron oxide, and PBK9, bone black. It is granulating, low staining, transparent, and has a light fastness of one. First thing I notice is it doesn't resemble actual sepia, really. Actual sepia is a bit more grey than this. Uh, this is almost inky looking. And while sepia is melanin derived from cephalopod ink, it's more granulating and more grey than this is. I mean, it's a nice, lively, lifelike, well, no, a lively, alive brown, but it's not necessarily close to sepia. Van Dyke brown now, PBR7 brown iron oxide, granulating, semi-transparent and non-staining and a light fastness of one. It seems very dark for a Van Dyke brown, I'm used to them being a little bit more red than this. That's a bit more like I expect a burnt umber to be, to be honest. That's really dark. I think it's probably, if I attack it with a slightly damp brush going to want to very strongly granulate so we'll see we'll see how it looks when dry next we have graphite gray which is a uh, non granulating opaque low staining light fastness unrated but probably one paint that lifts very easily, and it is a grey, it's not a black. You can you can tell as soon as you lift it that it is a grey, and an opaque grey it most definitely is. That could make for interesting storm clouds if you used it you know, with a bit of ultramarine mixed in. It's certainly an interesting grey. A lot of tube greys are quite boring. I'm just adding some water to see if I can get any interesting reticulations and patterns with it. Payne's Grey next. This is one of those colours that in acrylic I can't be without it. I get through loads of it. But in watercolour I never ever would use this. This is PB29 Ultramarine mixed with PBK9 Bone Black. So it's blue with some black added. Granulating, semi-transparent, low staining and a light fastness of one. This is a very blue-grey, but it feels quite weak. It doesn't seem to want to give a very strong pigment load. Um, it reminds me a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of vine black. It's that same sort of blue as vine black or a real indigo. And my guess is that the black will granulate out of the mix. And that will sort of give a blue underlayer. Next we have Lamp Black. Now, I think there might be a mistake on the Daniel Smith website here. It claims it's PBK6, which is Shungite, which is basically a type of natural Buckminster Fullerene. I think it's probably PBK7 Lamp Black, because that's what it usually is. It is um, non-granulating, opaque, heavily staining, and has a light fastness of 1. Certainly an intense colour. I mean, I don't use black a lot in watercolour, but when you're trying to do certain effects, lamp black is a really useful proper black. It's a hardcore black. Uh, for things like if you're doing silhouettes and you want a, p a pure silhouette, I think you can't beat this. Ivory black next, which uses PBK9 bone black. Granulating, semi-transparent, low staining and has a light fastness of one. And this has more of a brownish sort of undertone. Not as much as, not as, much as Mars Black does, but it ain't far off. There we are. And now onto the whites. First of all we have Chinese white, 
which is non-granulating, semi-transparent, non-staining and light fastness one. And that uses PW4 zinc oxide white. So this is usually the more transparent of the whites. This is the sort of mixing white. This is the white you can mix into most watercolours and sort of render them into gouache. And I'll put it over the area of pro marker that I've put out because otherwise it won't show up. Sorry, it's Spectrum Noir actually, it's not Pro Marker. Spectrum Noir True Black Alcohol Marker for my opacity squares. And then Titanium White next, which is the more opaque of the whites usually. Although this is still described as semi-transparent, non-granulating, non-staining, light fastness one. And it's PW6 Titanium Dioxide White. And again, this is one of those colours that in acrylic I get through gallons watercolour, never touch it. I think this is the first white watercolour I've ever bothered to swatch out because I just don't use it. Can be useful though, especially if you paint on tinted paper. It is certainly more opaque than the Chinese white, but it's not a true opaque. It's quite a weak titanium white. Titanium white is usually very opaque, so... That's a little bit of a, a weak one, I guess I would say. So, here endeth our mission, our journey. I will zoom you out, there we go, and we'll just have a quick look back through what we've seen today. So, this was the first sheet we did. We had um, this lovely burnt yellow ochre, which is a nice alternative to burnt sienna. The roasted French ochre was a little weak, as was the burgundy red. The Indian red is a nice sort of maroony Indian red whereas the Venetian red is more orange. The Italian burnt sienna is a lovely burnt sienna. It's similar in hue to the standard burnt sienna but this is granulating, really granulating and this is not. The raw umber violet looks like kaput mortuum however it's just a convenience mix so I would walk straight past that. Transparent brown oxide is nice as is the transparent red oxide. I really like both of those. Fired Gold Ochre, it's very similar to these ones, it's a little bit mild. Environmentally friendly red oxide and brown oxide, I really don't enjoy that much. Burnt Sienna is nice. The English Red, o English red Ochre I really like. Oops, you can't see that. The English Red Ochre I really like. I like the Burnt Umber. I think I prefer the environmentally friendly brown iron oxide to the Burnt Umber. And the raw umber is quite a nice one. It's got a nice greenish yellow undertone to it. And then the final, final ones. We had um, sepia here, which is quite granulating. Van Dyke brown, which is sort of gently granulating. The graphite grey is reticulating and cracking and looking beautiful. But it is a grey, not a black. So if you wanted the effect of a deep, dark black, don't go with this. Payne's Grey is just a blue with some black added. Uh, I don't enjoy that very much. Um, Lamp Black is a good, proper hard black, very neutral black. And the Ivory Black has got that yellow-brown undertone. Of the two whites, the Chinese White is the less opaque by a little bit. The Titanium White's perhaps a little bit more yellow. And the Chinese White perhaps a little bit more blue, if we had to put a, a tone on those. So there we are, that's the end of the sort of standard Daniel Smith colours, just got the special effect colours left to go. Thank you all very much, I hope you've enjoyed this series and good evening.